The Good Burger sequel has recently come out, and I have not watched it, but I, like many others, have enjoyed the first film. The main things I remember are the fire soundtrack, and of course, Ed's secret sauce, which looked high-key delicious, so of course, many have taken on the challenge of trying to replicate it. And today, it's my turn, but we are not creating a sauce with ingredients that sound good together and coloring it till it's orange. We will be carefully analyzing each and every scene that shows or mentions ingredients of the sauce to ultimately recreate it. So, get your pots and magnifying glasses ready, because today, we are going to figure out what's really in Ed's secret sauce. Hey, hey, would you watch it? Sorry. The finished sauce appears to be thicker, so we will need a thickening agent, a blender, and ingredients that will make the sauce orange. The only two ingredients spoken straight from Ed's mouth are charcoal, lemon juice, and some ketchup. Ketchup is typically used as the base in a burger or fry sauce, so we'll use two thirds of a cup. The lemon juice will brighten up the flavor and add a nice twang as well. Ed specified that you only use a little, so we'll use two tablespoons. There are two important details in this scene. The first is Ed is making the sauce in a huge pot instead of a mixing bowl, and the second is that the sauce is liquidy rather than thick when Ed is seen eating it. These two details tell us that one, Ed uses water, and two, Ed cooks the sauce. The water will help thin out the various sauces that will be added, so we'll use half of a cup. And we will be cooking the sauce to allow the ingredients to marry together. Next, Ed is seen pouring in malted milk powder, pickle slices and its juice, flakes of some sort, and a whole unpeeled onion. Malted milk powder is typically used in baked goods and milkshakes since it adds a toasty-like flavor. So while this will help us achieve the creamy-like appearance, this may affect the taste, but for the sake of accuracy, we'll use half of a tablespoon. Since ketchup contains a good amount of sugar, let's assume that Ed dumped in dill pickles and its juice, as to not overly sweeten the sauce. We'll use three ounces of pickles and two and a half to three tablespoons of pickle juice. This ingredient had me stumped since I watched the 13 year old video, not knowing that Paramount had uploaded an HD version. But I already wrote the script, so I'm not getting this out. We can see that these flakes are reddish in color and look crunchy. The comment section and I had a couple of ideas of what this could be, and a popular suggestion was, while watching the scene, I came across a comment by, and it only helped confirm some of the ingredients in the blender theory, but gave a good suggestion as to what these flakes could be. So a huge thank you and shout out to SCM. Anyway, they believed that these were bacon bits, which is a really good guess since they look similar. However, Dee Dee is vegetarian, so unless Ed didn't care and added it and failed to tell her, she wouldn't have ate it. Another commenter suggested shrimp flakes, which is a good guess since some shrimp flakes can appear red. However, they do have a different shape, plus they're pretty expensive. I know that this movie came out in 1996, but they still be pretty expensive, right? I don't know where Ed would have gotten shrimp flakes to be eaten, <laughs> so I don't think they're shrimp flakes. While we're here, bonito flakes out, since they are typically a paler beige color. My first guess was red pepper flakes, however, I had my doubts because who would dump a bunch of red pepper flakes in a bowl like that when you could just like shake them out. But I and another commenter noticed the shakers from pizza restaurants at this angle. Rather than for spiciness, I think these were used for flavor since Ed was seen sprinkling them in. We'll add half of a teaspoon to our sauce. Ed drops in a whole unpeeled onion in the sauce. We will not do that. We are eating this, so let's peel and slice up half of a medium onion. Since we already have our cutting boards out, let's mince up some garlic. Garlic is not mentioned anywhere, but garlic tastes good, and I'd assume you'd add garlic if you're cooking with an onion. Like I said, we will not add a raw onion to the sauce. Instead, we'll start off with sauteing the onions on a medium flame for about five to seven minutes or until soft. While those are cooking, let's go back to figuring out the rest of our ingredients. When I said we'll be analyzing scenes, I was being serious, but do not fret, it will be quite easy. The rest of the ingredients can be found around the kitchen. Some will be more obvious, some will call for speculation, and some never appear on screen at all. So I hope you're ready for some investigating. The first thing I see is mustard. This is what will make the sauce orange, and once blended, it will add a tangy taste as well. Depending on your own taste buds, add between half to one and a half tablespoons. This brown stuff looks like barbecue, which can be used for more sweetness and add a hickory flavor. The amount of barbecue will change the sweetness of the sauce, so stir in between three to six tablespoons depending on your taste buds. This glass bottle with the red top is hot sauce, and we can actually see the sauce in the bottle at this angle. Since I was sprinkling in red pepper pepper, I'm going to guess he used a similar amount of hot sauce for flavor rather than heat, so we'll use half to one tablespoon. A commenter theorized that soy sauce was an ingredient, and at first I didn't know how or where he got that idea from, but after looking more closely, we can see a glass bottle with a dark liquid. 
Another liquid that is dark in color and always comes in a glass bottle is Worcestershire. However, after further investigation, we can see that the bottle has what I'm assuming are dragons. So this is most likely soy sauce. Soy sauce has a strong flavor and is high in sodium, but we'll only add half to one teaspoon. At another angle, we can see that there are two glass bottles, and I'm guessing that the smaller one is in fact Worcestershire. We'll only add half to one teaspoon since its flavor is very strong. These big bottles with the clear liquid look like bottles of white vinegar. The vinegar can be used to deglaze the pan and it will add a nice flavor as well. We'll only need one tablespoon. And finally, we'll be adding one teaspoon of paprika in order to achieve the vibrant orange color. We don't want our onions to burn, so we're hopping back into the kitchen. Now that our onions are cooked, add the minced garlic, paprika, and red cracked pepper flakes and cook for about one to two minutes or until fragrant. Now we will deglaze the pan with our white vinegar. This will loosen up any stuck ingredients and help with extra flavor. Then we'll add in our ketchup, lemon juice, pickles plus its juice, and water. Whisk together until smooth and then bring to a simmer. Now we'll whisk in the ingredients that we just named off. Mustard, barbecue, soy, Worcestershire, hot sauce, and our melted milk powder. To get a deeper flavor and to thicken up the sauce, we'll allow it to render for about three to four minutes on a medium low heat while constantly stirring. In the meantime, let's figure out our remaining ingredients. Under the molten milk powder, we can see a large bottle of a white condiment. This is most likely used as a thickening agent. There are a couple possibilities of what this could be, so let's go over some of the guesses. A frequent guess was ranch, and while ranch is white, it's typically made out of milk, and that would curdle in the sauce. Plus, ranch is quite runny, so I do not think that would make a good stabilizer. Another guess was tartar sauce, which is mayo-based, and that would make it a good thickener, but it's not typically plain white. Plus, I personally don't want it to be tartar sauce. So, the mystery condiment is mayo. The mayo will help thicken up the sauce, and it will cut through all the ingredients. Depending on how you want your sauce, you can add in between two to five tablespoons. We can both see that blurry bottle in the background, and for the life of me, I could not read this, but I think it says meat tenderizer. And for the off chance that this is put in the sauce, the typical ingredients for a seasoned meat tenderizer are onion, paprika, salt, dried garlic, spices, and tomato. And we have all that covered in our sauce, so we're good, we're good, we're good. There's a container of iodized salt next to the pot, and I'll assume Ed would have added pepper if needed. Also, I don't think the fried salt was used for the sauce only for the fries since Good Burger did sell fries, so ignore the fry salt. These large white bags look like bags of sugar, so we'll need a sweetener of choice. The sweetener will help reduce the acidity of the sauce. And finally, dill, which is completely optional, but I think it will add on nicely to the pickle flavor. So, if you're using, add half of a teaspoon. Finally, we found all of our ingredients and our sauce has been simmering for a good while. Now, carefully transfer the sauce to a heat-safe blender or use an emulsion blender. Blend until the ingredients are smooth and there are no chunks to be seen. Now we will blend in our mayo to make the sauce creamy and thick. Then we will add in our salt, pepper, dill, and sweetener of choice. Make sure you taste as you go and adjust until you have a taste that you like. Now let's transfer our sauce to an unlabeled sketchy glass container and boom. We have successfully created Ed's Secret Sauce. The taste is hard to explain, but I really like it. It kind of tastes like a mix between onion ring dipping sauce and a Thousand Island sauce. The sauce is really good on burgers and especially with fries and probably onion rings as well. I made my brother some fried pickles and he really liked them with the sauce, so Ed definitely cooked here. If you're ever bored and have the time and these ingredients on hand, you should definitely try making this. I suggest making the sauce while listening to the Good Burger soundtrack or watching Good Burger. Or better yet, make the sauce, add it to a burger, or watch the movie. It would be a perfect dinner and meal idea, or maybe for a 90s themed get together? I don't know. But I do know a lot of people craved this sauce while growing up, and still do, so I'm happy if I can make your childhood or current dreams come true. If you ever try out this sauce, please return and let me know how it turned out. And maybe return for future videos, since I'll probably make more like this, because it was really fun to make. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.